So Aurelio was hoping to do four lines of this text today, which seems doable. Uh, I think we can do it. It's a little optimistic, honestly, but you know, let's see what we can do. Am I in the wrong? Have we gotten to the part where I say we're going to do four sentences today? Uh, I just said that part. You weren't here yet because you went away, but now you're back. Right, 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 right. Okay, well, let's try. 15 minutes each or 10. <laughs> okay, let's go for it. Um, oh, you guys, I forgot to set up my thing where I write on the screen. How did I do that? I knew I was forgetting something. The thing is, I always feel like I'm forgetting something, so it's not even like a useful, it's like one of those indicator lights <laughs> that you just um, like, you know, push approve on every single time because it's like, yeah, I'm definitely forgetting something. I, I'm aware of that. Uh, if only you would tell me what I'm forgetting. Okay, we're here. More audio, got it. All right, this looks pretty good. Um, where did we stop last time? It's like somewhere here. I think with the top tenon. Yeah, we got to top tenon. Which I don't think we talked about what top tenon is. Um, it's like a deity top tenon. Apparently it's some type of Spanish drug, according to the search suggestions um yeah it has something to do with the like the original island that's all i really know honestly i don't know much about uh top 10 and syncretized with Ptah, which is what we see here um androgynous personification of the primordial mound um yeah that's it i forget what tenon means too i don't think we know for sure what tenon means but it's the Risen land, yeah, something like that. That was gonna be my guess. Raised, the raised earth, like the original island. Okay, and he syncretized with Ptah. So that's- It's a non-binary deity. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, not even that, not terribly surprising either. Um, I mean, ancient Egypt was, anytime I talk to anyone in the social sciences who says something like, uh, gender roles are a modern invention or like the nuclear family is a modern invention or like marriage is a modern, like there's people who say these things and seem to sincerely believe them. I'm always like ancient Egypt, like whatever you're gonna say next, ancient Egypt, ancient Egypt disproves whatever it is you're going to say. Um, it was highly patriarchal, revolved around nuclear families as like the atomic unit of society. It had gender roles that are immediately recognizable to us today. Um, you know, it just it just breaks all of these really nice sounding hypotheses about how the world doesn't have to be this way. That said, I I think we should always think about how things don't have to be the way that they are. And I'm not trying to like poo poo that effort. Um, but yeah, ancient Egypt is pretty typical. Uh, it's it's immediately recognizable to us in terms of the way things sort of work in its society, um, but. There are, there's evidence of like, um, plenty of evidence of homosexual relationships that don't seem to have been suppressed. Um, there, and you know, it's something like an androgynous deity also is not really problematic. So yeah, really interesting for that kind of stuff. Um, and when I say that kind of stuff, I don't know exactly what I mean, but these kind of questions about like, um, you know, kind of the way that we put people in boxes and, and organize um, interpersonal roles according to like gender and hierarchies and all those things. Um, it's interesting because it's all there, but it there's a lot of stuff that isn't there. Like, um, like racism and homophobia don't appear to have been present at all from what we can tell. Um, Women were legally equal to men, if not in practice equal to men, because it was a, a male-dominated society. You know, it's, it it allows us to kind of investigate all these things. So yeah, something to think about. Not what we're working on today, but worth always worth going back to. Okay, and I think we did. I think we did the hieratic a bit too. I mean, it's all it's all here. It's all stuff that we know. 
Um, or Falcon on a stick, Falcon on a stick. Uh, two Falcons on a stick with Ptah Ptahtenen. Uh, maybe it refers to both of these guys, or maybe it's just Ptah Ptahtenen gets two Falcons on a stick. I don't know, curious. And then here, this is our next sentence. So who wants it? Not seeing any raised hands. Um, I believe I've picked on Dante a lot lately because he always seems to be at the top of the list. So at this time, you know what? I'm gonna go from the bottom of the list um, and then go upwards and see if that mixes things up a little bit. So I've got Aurelio. Normally I would say yes, but I'm in the middle of serving lunch. Can I uh, skip forward to the next one? I mean, let's skip Absolutely. forward to the next one, you know what I mean? Just got home, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Uh, Kevin. All right. Um, uh, U, F, uh, Jedu, uh, Ujed, uh, Pa. So, uh, so he said, um, Jedu, yeah. Uh, Jedu pa uh, jed, I I'm not I don't know that word there. So um, uh, jed at it's the like, end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, jed just means like um, youth. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah. What do you do with this thing? It, um, yeah, this at the front. At the front. Oh yes. wait, I am. Um, uh, you or yeah, U F. Uh, Jedu. So then he said, or he said, um, is it? I have this. No, uh, the decision. I decided the decision. Or. Yeah. Okay. So. UF Jadun. We'll oh, come that? back to that. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to it. So, oh. this part, Wedja. Oh, we. Pa... Yeah, I'm really not sure what to do about that, honestly. So, but um, I, I have a hypothesis. I'm going to see what you guys think. Um, but we can get, we, like, before working on it, we can go ahead and get the meanings of these things. So what is Wedja? Uh, it's, it's to decide or separate? Yeah. Um, yeah, decide. Or, I, don't, I think we've been saying judge. I often translate it judge, but it's judge. maybe not, maybe not an, an important distinction to make. Yeah, like, we have to make some kind of judgment about about what? Pa Ajed Snell. I don't know. Uh, what is that last word there? Snell? Two? Yeah. It's just two. Oh, okay. It's the um, two Ajeds. And Ajed oh, means so like it's, youth. Um, so it's the two youths. Judge yeah. between. Is it judge between them? Judge between um, these two youths. And then um, this part at the beginning is weird. I have, I have a possible fix in mind, which involves inserting a single hieroglyph that would totally fix it. Um, but I'm interested to hear other hypotheses about how we can make could, this work. Could it just be... Um, uh... Uh, plural first person pronoun. Plural first person. Yeah, it, the N. Uh, I think it is. Yeah. I think this is the the first person plural pronoun. Um, but I don't understand what this and like you can see I've typeset it here according to, uh, I think according to Gardner's transcription. 
and these these spaces were all in the transcription I was using, right? And they're like phrase spaces, uh, but they're not present in the original hieratic. You can see that like here, there's a space here and it's not present here, right? So the space we can possibly just ignore because um, I just typed it up following the transcription I was looking at without necessarily trying to like heal any errors in the text while doing it. Um, I think we actually put the dividing line here. Wait, before I say what I think, I want to hear what other people think. Because EUF jedun doesn't mean anything. It's meaningless. Um, the hieratic is clearly there. We have uh, EUF. So that's this part. And then we have the jed, which we've seen before. We've got a really nice oo here that's. Um, you know, fully there. And then let me just clear that so we can actually see what's underneath. We've got the N and then we've got this little squiggly thing that, that we've seen before as the plural strokes. So in my opinion, the transcription is very good uh, with, with nothing missing. I mean, there's a lacuna here, but this is easily predictable because we have most of this um, elaborate thing that we, we spent some time talking about earlier. We saw it before like this. Very clearly we have um, most of that, you know. So, and then we can easily get, um, what do we need here? We need a little, little quail chick in there. So all of that I think is good. Okay, so assuming for the sake of argument that this is what what we see here is correct. What do we do with this? Well, first question would for me would be the Jedu. What do we make out of the out of the quail chick there to begin with? Um, because we're looking for this should be a, a verb, right? U F Jedu should be an infinitive. Infinitive wouldn't have a U at the end normally. Um, so that confuses me a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, there's there, um, set, set them as an object, like a like a weird third person object pronoun, like these words or something. But I don't think that's all that usual, is it? Doesn't seem common to me. Um, you know, it. I haven't read every single Egyptian text, and I, I don't speak the language really, so I never want to say never. But this. I've read a lot of Egyptian texts and this doesn't look like anything I've seen. Actually what it ends up looking like are some like, you know, old Egyptian Sejimu F forms or whatever. And that that doesn't exist anymore. So, you know, it hasn't existed for a thousand years. So that's just not, um, that's the first thing that I thought of when I saw it was like these old Egyptian type forms that you see in like the pyramid text or whatever. And that just doesn't work, especially because we clearly have this uh, like pseudo verbal construction. So we have an infinitive here. Um, okay, so we, we've got a broken text here. Um, and I'm sorry, Aurelio, I think this is gonna throw a huge wrench into your plans of doing four lines um, because we just have like an Egyptian, a, a section of Egyptian that doesn't make any sense. We gotta try to make some sense of it. It's our job, um, but it might take a minute. So does anyone have any suggestions about how we can make this make sense. Mm, the U or the N? Because the N, if I knew what the U is, I could maybe make some sense out of the N by saying, oh, you know what, that goes after the plural strokes and there's just an, like to them or something, um, there's just something missing. And Sen and an F and whoever he's talking to. But I'm still stuck on the quail check before that. Yeah, um, and the quail chick is, if you could get rid of the quail chick, um, well, you'd still be kind of stuck. What? Okay, you have a suggestion? Yeah, that's okay. I'm, I'm not going to tell them that idea yet, though, because I want to see what ideas they have. Okay, she, she got the same idea I had. So <laughs> yeah, that's a start. I just, pro I just project yeah. my hypotheses onto the cat's yeah. meow. That's, that's how I gain, um, um, you know, consensus on my opinions. Okay, so if, if we got rid of the ooh, we're still kind of stuck. That, that is a good instinct though. Like 
because you know scribes are copying these texts quickly they they have a lot of muscle memory kind of baked into the task and you you will end up with kind of some occasional erroneous hieroglyphs that are thrown in where they don't belong and if you can delete that one hieroglyph and have a perfectly valid text that really is kind of the minimal amount of tinkering you would need to do um and so that that becomes a, a like one valid solution, right? Because basically we, we want to find a way that this makes sense according to um, the way Egyptian is supposed to work according to our descriptive um, framework that we built around how we think Egyptian works. But we want to do it while changing as little as possible because we don't want to just um, impose our theories onto the, the ancient texts themselves. Um, deleting a single letter is often the the most uh, economical way of doing that. In this case, I think adding a single letter is the best thing we could possibly do. Does anyone have an idea about a letter that I might add that would make this make perfect sense? I can only think of an S like Ensign or something to them. So we would do a Sen here. Oh, um, yes. ah, dang, I need two letters. You're right. <laughs> yeah, we, we, would, we, need a, we need a few. Yeah, I mean, if so we, that can't be, no, no. Yeah, we could get an S in here somewhere and maybe an N, but yeah, we, we still need two letters and, and we have to delete one. So I would, I would call that um, three changes. Although remember that the letters have dif different frequencies and probabilities based on context. So it's, they're not actually all equal to one another, but it, yeah, um, still, it's not a huge change, but it's still quite a change. I actually want to do this. But you, you, okay. this space, I put that there so we can delete that with no cost whatsoever. If we add in just a reed leaf, we get Eowyn Weja Pa'ajeds now. We will judge these two youths. Interesting. Nice. He said we Interesting. Mm, question about that. So that's the sentence initial you. It's not yeah. a future three be, uh, because there is no R afterwards, at least not well, visible. Well, this, this text doesn't use R's in uh, third futures. Ah, okay. All right. So it would be a... Um, It'd be a third um, future. Yeah. It would be a valid third future, which fits in this context because it's a, what would we call that? Um, what's the proper grammatical term for that again? Um, not a cohortative. What do you call that? Like, let's, we will... Oh, optative. That's sort of like an optative. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. It's like an optative. We will, um, uh, we will judge these two youths. Okay. That works. Yeah. And it also explains uh, this form later. In my opinion, it, it does a really good job of explaining this, which I initially didn't understand either. Um, but let's see how that works out. Okay. So that's my suggestion. If anyone has any other suggestions, feel free to, to toss them in. I have no idea whether it's right or not. But it does seem like, um, you know, if we're adding one highly probable letter that makes the whole thing work. That seems like the minimal change we can make to this text to make it um, perfectly normal late Egyptian, exactly like we're expecting to see. Um, okay, and we'll, we already looked at the hieratic a little bit. You know, we talked about these. There's that thing there. There's the little man. Um, there's our our normal paw. His wings have are really getting away from him. So the paw part is here and here. And then the, the aleph is here. But that, that letter combination is so frequent that they're kind of like almost merging into a single glyph at this point. Um, and then our ajed is actually over here. It's this whole combination of things. Hmm. Just gets a little tricky. And the addition of the a uh uh the the ayin to the jed again that just means oh because it's a it's a it's a noun i see the youth yeah the, the two youth i see 
It has okay. nothing to do with the word Jed. It has nothing to do yeah. with this Jed. And you can actually see they're written quite differently, right? This yeah, one yeah. is written like this, uh -huh. odd Jed. And then this one has become sort of fossilized with really like a middle Egyptian hieratic type writing. These individual characters, um, they often don't appear like this. You can see how it is in Ajed. It's just like the, the um, Viper character is just a slash. And then the yeah. D is, is almost like a T. They've, right. um, they've changed individually, but this is kind of like a fixed writing. And then Thank you. This is the little the little child with the um, probably a child with their finger to their lips because ancient Egyptian children suck their index fingers instead of their thumbs. So when they depict mm -hmm. children, they always depict them like with the index finger in their mouth, That's which is so kind of cool. neat. Yeah, it's yeah. great. It's like um, you know, it's such a learned behavior. Although we don't really think of it as being a learned behavior, like children sucking their thumbs is obviously just like. You know the same way children use pacifiers or whatever they just have like they want to have something in their mouth um after they're weaned but for some reason ancient egyptian kids suck their fingers which means that they saw other kids doing it and adopted the same habit kind of neat anyway okay and then the little bird because it's like little because it's like young person and then the right, two I'm is so really can we can we go back to the little child? Can you show the strokes of the little child? Just like show the actual order of those I, strokes. I can't because I don't know exactly what's drawn here. Um, we've got. I bet a really good. <laughs> yeah, because he's looking. Actually, into guys, I like the I like I like the confidence, but um, I'm still struggling with this one. Still trying different ways. <laughs> I mean. Do you start from the middle, from the head, and then work your way down, and then add the arms? Is that how it works? Or do you start with the right-hand side arm, and then do the rest? Um, I still haven't figured out what this one is, honestly. I mean, if you look at the dark and light, that should tell us something, because the center looks darker, then becomes lighter towards the legs, and then the right-hand side arm is the lightest, but that may have been done first. Because if you look at whatever came before, the, the Ajit, that is the same. So it looks to me like he did the, like the, 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 the arm going up first and then continued from there sort of like right to left. Yeah, then do the middle or maybe do the other arm first because that one's so nice and I really haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> this one's tricky, Aaron, um, fully agree. Mm -hmm. I've wondered the same thing. There's a bit of an abrasion here too that kind of affects our like ability to see light and dark because it makes the ink here look really light when it's actually just this slightly like I would say all of this part is kind of in one like medium dark shade and then this part is in a very dark shade. Um, which is a little confusing this part seems to kind of match the darkness of the immediately preceding characters. Um, but I don't think we have a like a pen dip situation here. It doesn't look that much darker. So yeah, it's a little tricky. Hmm. I mean, we could One have thing a... you could do is, oh, sorry, go ahead, Christian. No, go ahead, Aurelia. No, I mean, um, when I can't figure it out from the text itself, often Merla is helpful. Um, okay. Just because you can see how the, the, the glyph evolved over the, over the centuries. With one caveat, of course, Murder is somebody just like us, copying from the originals and imposing his own opinion. Um, so mm -hmm. that may um, that may actually skew, uh, skew things. But often enough, it's clear if you look at five different versions in Murder, which is always fun. <laughs> I like it. It's fun. Um, Did I ever show you guys um, this cool app too? It's by the same. A uh, guy that did, or whomever did the the dictionary. It's called Hieratic, and uh, it shows you what? a lot of different variances. Whoa! Wow! I need this. Um, oh my gosh! So it's the same guy or whoever created the AO dictionary. But yeah, I was uh, when I saw that, I was like, yeah, I, I need to have that. <laughs> You can look up. You can look up a sign by the gardener number. Well, this is what I do. I open up the dictionary first, so I can find the the gardener sign, and then it tells me that sign, kind of coded out next to the word, and then I can look it up and 
the hieratic one. But yeah, I agree. I also Very like cool. Index and how, this one too. How much is it, Peter? The the apps? Oh, it's like it's like ten bucks or something like that. Seems I remember. Worth it. Yeah. yeah. I want. I'm not support, finding it so. in the app store, but I I definitely need this. Oh. Uh, wait, their their website is down. That's weird. Uh, Just a little bit. I, as I remember, it is a little bit uh, old. Updated. Yeah. Yeah, it's like 2009 to 2015. So that's why it, the, maybe the new iPhones uh, doesn't support. Okay. Well, maybe. we'll look. We'll look for it later. We'll we'll come back to this. Um, um, Peter, if you can try to use the share app feature to get a link for it and put it in Discord. Yeah. And cool. then um, I'll do that. Maybe we can find it. I wasn't able to find it just now quickly searching, but I'll go back and look uh, more carefully later. Okay, so this is basically what we got. Um, and it's made of, let me just pick one of the, this one looks pretty nice. It's made of a, a body, an arm, a back arm, and then two little feet. Actually, it looks like those, the feet are done. That part is in one and that's a second one. And then something yep. like this. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, intuitively, I would think center first, so the body first, and then add the arms. Um, it just doesn't really match up with the light and dark we see in the, the example we're just looking at. But I think there will be a few again. more of that. It's going to come again. So maybe yeah. if we look at two or three of them over time. Actually, so in, there should be one a couple lines up, because we had that word in the third line down, line 15. Um, if we go up a little bit, see what it looks like there. Let me see if I can zoom out without crashing everything. It doesn't really like you to zoom in on this, and I did it anyway. Okay, command zero. No. No. So it's actual size. Okay. Uh, which line, Aaron? Uh, should be. Um... We just had it. Yeah, yeah right there, it. right there. Um... Uh, oh, it's a lacuna. Never mind. <laughs> That's why we never ran into this before. I I bet it's in here again. Let's just look really quickly and see if we can spot it. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't surprise me to see it again. Mm, well, not seeing it immediately. So let's just see if it comes up again. But I think we have enough to say where this sign is, at least. Um, I see like the head has gotten kind of like swallowed by it being all together, but then our feet, little curly arm and arm out the back. That's it. And that's definitely the sign that we have here. All right. And yeah, and then that's that whole, that's the line. Um, so that was, that was Kevin. Let me go back to my list. Oh, y'all moved around on me. Uh, I think Peter was originally kind of on deck. You wanna try some of this, Peter? Sure. Let me just put this in Discord really fast. Oh, you got it already. Nice. Well, I got the website. I don't know if that's I don't know if that is still real, but there you go. So I put it in the hieratic and calligraphy uh, area. Okay. Cool. Okay, where are we at? Let's see. Ah, uh, we are. Uh, we are here. here. Oh, the two. Oops. Yeah. Okay. So probably. Air, we are two. I think it's and, a. I think this whole thing is a verb. Gui. It can mean oh, like okay. to flee or to. It's like put an end, stop, something like that. Okay, and the two is attached to that verb. Is that right? Yeah, I'm not actually sure what it does here, but it's just okay. on there. It's just there. Okay. And 10 would be them? We ten them or something? 
10 is not them. 10 is different pronoun, not third person. Okay. Think about like Teuton in Coptic. Yeah. <laughs> it's second person. You y'all. Oh, y'all. Okay. Three for me. Then you. we do have a. And Sen is. Uh, would be them, right? Yeah. Okay. That's them. And then me like na a or nai. Um, yeah, uh, me na you can kind of learn as a compound that means something like thus. It's it's okay. literally like this, but it's kind of like yeah, yeah. Exa exactly. It is a literal translation me na. Yeah, or okay. like that. Okay. And then Ea Keten. So then Keten. Uh, I want to say an U at the end there, but probably not. <laughs> we talked not. about uh, Ea Keten. Chet Chet. Uh, oh, Chet Chet. Um, Nebra. Or yeah. Raneb? Raneb, yeah. Raneb, Ho Neb, every day. This one is just every day. Okay. Okay, Wait, so now. let's, yeah, let's go, let's go through the translation really quick. We have a Sejimef here, and okay. then a, a sort of direct object here, and then this word that means something like thus. Thus. Okay. That's kind of how it breaks down. It's a little tricky, but I'll tell you something. So one of the reasons I really like my solution of just putting a read leaf here is because mm -hmm. that gives us, um, uh, we shall judge these two youths in order that, um, or with the result that y'all stop them. Like arguing and things like that. Yeah, something like that. Okay. So chet chet means fighting. Uh, <laughs> is uh, reflecting sound? Is reflecting or something like uh, from the stick or something from from a device? Chet chet something. Oh, it's from advice. Yeah, wow. I mean, wow. it is. I mean, is if if smash if uh, smash a I don't know a stick to someone. Oh, that's that would be yeah. head head though. That would be with um, third age head head. This is chat chat. I I, I mean, there uh, chat that it is similar. Stick? Could be, yeah. I don't really know the etymology of this chat chat, but it does both mean fighting. Uh, both are actually reflecting a word. Oh, um, you mean reduplicating? Yeah, reduplicating. Okay. Reduplicating, yeah. Yeah, yeah it it's is clearly com completely. Yeah, it's definitely reduplicated of a word chet, which I don't know what that means. I would have to look it up, but yeah. And it's, I mean, a lot of times with these reduplicating, uh, especially like quadriliteral verbs that are reduplicated, you get uh, an idea of like some kind of repeated action. So like maybe hypothetically, if chet means to, to fight or to argue, then chet chet means to like, you know, really get into it all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Something like that. Uh, okay, so- uh, I mean, it could Something like a quick, a quick verb, word. Echoic? Yeah. Something, okay. it is uh, imitate the sound of. Oh, like oh, onomatopoeic. Like onomatopoeic. Yeah. yeah. It reminded me kind of 
uh, strangely enough, of the Yiddish word like kibitzing or something like that, where you know you're just kind of complaining and things like that. But Aurelio could could help me with that too. I don't know if that's a uh, a similar situation, but um, anyway. Okay. Yeah. So what I what I see. Well, what do you see here then, Peter? How would you translate this whole thing? Yeah, so first verb was um, leave off or, or stop them uh, like this. I'm a little bit confused by the a uh, here. Yeah, this here, aha. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. I think it means continuing to do something. Okay, okay. Literally stand, but stand. Right, right. Stand doing something, fighting. Uh, and then right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, every day. Okay. Yeah. So I think they'll leave off, um, immediately stop them, uh, right now, uh, from continually fighting by giving them this judgment. Uh, yeah. who, who's going to be in this, who's going to be in control. <laughs> yeah. So the, the way I take this entire thing, my understanding of it going all the way back to here. Let's go all the way back to here. So uh, this is um, whoever is speaking, uh, Baneb Jed, I guess. So um, he said, uh, we shall judge these two youths that you may prevent them from thus continually fighting every day. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what I got for that. Um, and it requires, again, the insertion of one reed leaf right here, which is a pretty, I mean, Egyptologists often, like, not that it's a good thing, but Egyptologists often do a lot more, um, make, a, make much more substantial changes of text to try to make them work. So that's, that's pretty minimal, I think. Otherwise, I have no idea what to do with this. It just doesn't make any sense. It's just like, it's, it's a form that doesn't exist. So that's kind of tricky. Okay, good job, Peter. Um, let's see, my list is all different now. I can't remember who was actually next before. I know I called on Aurelio and he asked to be allowed to eat his lunch. Um, Which he just did, quick, so I'm happy to jump in. Okay. Quick question on the red. My assumption sure. has always been that that's the start of the sentence, right? Uh, yeah, so. it's normally the start of like a new section, but these here they're uh, quite frequent. So they're like, you can think of them, <coughs> sorry, you can think of them as paragraphs perhaps. Uh -huh. That's um, we also, Especially. we didn't look at the hieratic for this at all. I just realized. I um, was surprised by the me, uh, the, the milk jug uh, sign. And yeah. I was a little bit, just because that's, I shouldn't be surprised by that, but yeah, I was. I was also surprised by the, the paw wing moving, but I, I've seen that a little bit in the Harper song as well, where it's like mm. you've got the bird and then the wing several millimeters away. Yeah, they've drifted. Uh, His wings are falling off. Another thing to point out maybe is the um, the ch. Yep. Um, he's nice here. He actually puts the dot, which even in older text, often you don't find. Uh, like lecture and R look exactly the same very often. Yeah. So when you like, right. for example, when you write Rome, um, I mean, you wouldn't know if the middle one there is a, is it exactly, it just looks like double R or double Ch. But in this case, he's nice. He actually puts a little uh, extra dot on there. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Anything else about this that's interesting? It looks that I think if you'd spend like really just a moment looking at this. The the Aleph bird, when it's combined with the N, looks kind of weird because you just yeah. barely get anything. Um, you know, we might see this more fully as something like that, but with the N on top, it ends up, uh, you kind of just get a little bit of it, not really much there. Yeah. Very true. Also, Na and Ta start to look rather similar. Not the yeah. same. Uh, but since the T is abbreviated to a horizontal stroke and the N is abbreviated to a slightly curved horizontal stroke, um, yeah. <laughs> they end up being quite similar. 
I also saw the plural marks next to the problematic uh, Jedu N uh, are interesting. Sometimes you have like, is there other plurals in this line? Yep, uh, towards the end in front of the, the every day. Just after yeah. the chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Um, so you've got the vertical and then you've got the, the horizontal and they just kind of pile up on the, on the horizontal, whereas the vertical, sometimes uh, you can see that they're distinct strokes, but anyway, I thought that that was kind of interesting. Yeah, it's a really sharp difference in how they look. Yeah. There, there um, is a third one, which is basically the three vertical strokes uh, stacked on top of each other. I don't think we have it in this mm -hmm. text, but I remember, Peter, we had looked at that once before when you were looking for it. And that looks almost like a double yeah. bird on a stick, like stick yeah. with two. Yeah. <laughs> that comes out like a, like a bird on a stick, but with a double slanted line on top. <laughs> Right, yeah. That yeah, kind of thing. yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah, lots of things to play with. Um yeah, this is a good illustration of this point. Um, I wonder if I could even like make this a, a real paper. This thing where like the um what was it? It's called like information content. I didn't invent that term, I stole it from a linguistics paper. But uh basically like how much information a sign has in its immediate context is best correlated with like the amount that it can be abbreviated. So a sign, um, something like, you know, this here where you've got 10, uh, you've already got two signs before it that kind of lead you to expect a, a plural stroke. So now that sign provides very little information to the reader because it's, it's already highly predictable in that context so it can get abbreviated a lot more than other signs can. And um, so that was the, the paper I read that had that in it was talking about like uh, word length. So word length is directly correlated with information content. So like how much information a, a word provides in context. So words that on average have very low um, information in context tend to be shortened much more quickly. And the same thing is true for hieratic signs. You can, you can clearly see the ones that are most abbreviated are the ones that are most predictable given their immediate context. That's kind of cool. And like that, this is a perfect case for it, right? Because the plural strokes, they, they pretty much tell you nothing most of the time, um, or they tell you very, very little. So we would expect them to get highly abbreviated. And they do, they get abbreviated so fast. Even in middle Egyptian, we get this kind of thing, you know, this little squiggle for the plural strokes. Yeah. And then by late yeah. Egyptian, they've abbreviated them all the way into like, um, what is that? Like the, um, like the Adidas logo or something? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like the horizontal thingy. Yeah, um, yeah like line. Um, okay, any questions about the hieratic before we go to the next sentence? Aurelio, we're gonna get one and a half lines today. So All right, let's do it. So much, so much for best laid plans. Okay, so we got this new section. Right, and I always think of the, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Christian, but at least in this text, whenever there is a, a red beginning, I just put a period at the end of the sentence before. It's really yeah, for good. me more. And I use like a, like a comma before every U. So those become sort of like, like uh, that little comma tie in there. But okay, let's go. Uh, in worship, I think it goes on with ship. Let's see. Worship. Eh? Worship. Not ship. Worship be. Interesting. So there's a yeah. vowel at the end. Be. Worship be. And then before we go into that, who is it who's answering this? So then answered, namely Banebjet. Um, so actually it must have been Atum who was speaking before. Nature um, the great living God. Um, and this one here, I cheat. I've seen that in the, the translation before that was translated as uh, to what was said with uh, to him. Yeah. So Jetenef makes sense to me, just the M. I didn't know you can use it that way. But uh, 
semantically, it certainly fits. So does that fit, Christian? M for to what was said to him? Uh, M is from and I have M is in, but not as toward. It could be sort of elliptical, like in response to or in responding to what was said to him. I don't, I mean, it makes sense to me. I don't know how to analyze it further than that. Um, M okay. Jedet NF is to what was said to him or in response to what was said to him. So. Okay. So then we have the beginning basically, then answered by Nebjit, the great living God in response to what was said to him. Let's see what he said. Oh, what he Wait, uh, before we move on, uh, what ah. kind of verb is this? Ah, dang, I thought I could just, just skip over that. <laughs> <laughs> um, aha, hang on. So that was aha in worship. I mean, I would have expected, I would have expected um, an infinitive here, an infinitive here, like we've seen before, where the, everything is sort of in the present tense. Yeah, I mean, after the aha in, I mean, hmm. yeah. But wait, then then the subject is following. Wait. Hang on, hang on. Yep. That doesn't make sense. Makes sense Oops. to me. Eh? Ahain. Wait, so how does ahain plus, plus, uh, plus infinitive work be? It's Subject not an infinitive. After? It's not an infinitive. What is it then? It is a finite verb. Uh, one of the few that we've seen so far. It's just a sedgemeth. Oh, geez. OK. So then Banebjed answered what was said to him. Makes sense. Go ahead. So that's just yeah. a finite word. Yep. It's just a sentiment. I, I was I shouldn't be surprised by this, but uh, it was always a little bit jarring for me to see words split across lines, but you know, it shouldn't be, but it is for some reason. Uh, it's not, it's actually relatively um, infrequent. They do tend to um, they try to squeeze things in such a way that you don't get words broken between lines as a general rule. So it, it it's not that common. Uh, I think it's a little weird. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, and we can, well, we gotta look at hieratic and just make sure, I mean, I feel like this one is pretty straightforward, but let's go ahead and make sure that we've that we're paying attention to everything. So, aha, uh -huh, it's a little broken, but we got it. There's a little hand and an N and then wesh. They have this nice little like sign inside the shin sign that makes it really clear yeah. like, if you see if you see that. If you see the little thing inside, that's definitely um, shin. And then over here, this is all really nice. I mean, B, the man with hand to mouth. Ba is again written with the paw sign, which is kind of weird, but whatever, we've seen that before. Stroke, falcon on a stick. The neb sign, uh, very often written with something inside of it too. Jed e. couldn't be any easier. Is this a nispa, nispa form or? Is what it uh, is. I mean, it wish be, wish be, or no. Um, it's so we know from uh, the the less well attested dialects of Coptic that these um, these triliteral verbs do often have vowels on the end, and in this specific case, because it's a sedgemeth, we can actually reasonably guess that this vowel was stressed. Um, so it's probably like, I mean, I don't know how to vocalize this for sure, but it's probably something like, um, uh, I don't know, wash B on Abjad. Like the stress is on the, is on the last syllable. So it's, there's enough here for it to get some kind of marker of a vowel, presumably an I type vowel because it uses a double reed leaf. And, um, and then the fact that it's stressed that that vowel is specifically stressed in this case. That's what distinguishes it from the infinitive. Um, yeah, that's probably why it gets the little extra writing in there. That's my guess anyway. Um, all of this looks pretty good. We've got a little uh-uh, 
it looks like what we've been seeing is basically a plus sign and then a little Z type thing for the, um, the little tent pole and the papyrus scroll underneath. Uh, Ankh is missing, except for just a little bit of the arm. But then we have this, and it's a phrase we've seen a dozen times. That one's really easy to reconstruct. Most of the owl is there. You can fill it in. And then Jed looks like just what we've seen before. Jedet, Nuff, all there. All accounted for. Okay, any questions about hieratic? I think we're gonna have to leave it here because we've only got a few minutes left before we go to, to do hieroglyphic. I don't think we actually have time to do this because there's some weirdness in here that we're definitely gonna have to discuss. I have a question about uh, Jedet. You, in this mm -hmm. context, what that does mean? Does it mean um, uh, it's just saying or something like that? Or what, what was said? It's a relative, it's a relative verb. What was said. It's like an old fashioned type relative, too, right? Because we have in late Egyptian, we have like the E Sejimef relatives. Um, but here we have Jedet Naf, what was said to him. Okay. So it's just a feminine relative verb. And it, at this point, they become something like um, almost like past participles where they just agree in gender. And in this case, it's feminine because it's just some unknown it, that which was said to him. Okay. I think that's what it is anyway. You know, I do my best. Okay, guys, so that was good. We, we got, um, you know, not as far as Aurelio had hoped, but I think we did a good job and we solved some mistakes. Next time, maybe. next time. Okay, next, next time, time we're really gonna just like <laughs> hit it hard. So cool, okay, and so cool. I'll see y'all in like two minutes for hieroglyphic. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. Bye everyone. Thanks.